Welcome to the Short Rod Show. You're talking with Ben. And Brett. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We are on episode 12 today. Yep. We're talking a little bit about uh, an ice fishing adventure we, we were recently on, and then also a little bit about uh, some other topics hopefully you guys are, will enjoy with us, but uh, thanks for joining us and listening in. Hopefully uh, you're sitting in your car, sitting in your truck, sitting at your desk. Sitting on the ice. Sitting on the ice, listening to uh, the Short Rod Show. Yeah. So everything, so we made a trip on Sunday out on the ice. Um, you know, it's been kind of warm around here in central Iowa, so we had to, we had to head north. I don't know. I'd say probably an hour, hour and a half. About an hour and a half. Yeah. Um, just a, a small pond. We didn't go to any major. We didn't go to Clear Lake. We didn't go to any major areas, but. Everyone um, went to Clear Lake. Yeah. And we did not. Yeah. I wasn't going <laughs> to do that. Just, I don't know. I just don't ever want to, I don't enjoy going to places that are very heavily trafficked. Yep. I like to kind of go off the beaten path and kind of find a bite off on my own a little bit. Even if, you know. Uh, kind of like what we're going to get into today. Sometimes it doesn't always work out as well as you want yeah. it to. But we were the only ones there. We were yeah, we were the only ones on the ice. But maybe there bike. was a reason there was we were the only ones out <laughs> like, on the ice. We did okay. <laughs> I think that was good. We actually, there's been many times we've been fishing, we haven't had enough to even, I mean, not even see a fish. Yeah. So we yeah. got into them a little bit, which was good. So Plus, just nice to get out. Yeah, it was good to get out, get the scratch itch a little bit, especially with the warm front that we've had. Yep. Um, and frankly, the... Forecast looks a little better than it has recently, but not great. Yeah, even coming up, it's going to be a little sketchy. Yeah. Yeah. We'll still be driving north Yep, yep. Like to get on the ice. Uh, but we want to talk about our, our trip a little bit. Um, and then also along with that, just some of the uh, tactics we use for uh, finicky bluegills. Yep. Tight-lipped bluegills. Because that's what we ran into. And that's what I ran into today, actually, out on the ice. Yep. Really tight-lipped. Um, a little bit of that. And then also go over some... Uh, reading ice conditions. Yep. Um, just some of the differences that we see on ice around the region here. Um, what happens when ice freezes and refreezes and gets rained on? It gets rained on. Uh, flow comes into a lake. Yeah. Freezes. Holes up don't refreeze. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All sorts of things happen when you get some wonky weather like we've had. Yep. What else are we going to talk about? Um. What? Uh. Oh. Uh, reading fish on your flasher. Oh, yeah. That's fish right. Fish behavior. Um, that's that's another idea. key thing, especially when the fish get tight-lipped. Yep. Um, just being able to read, well, how'd they react to that bait? What was, well, what do you imagine they, how they reacted yep. to that bait? Did they come flying in then turn off? They come in and just want to keep staring at it? Yep. Fish um, behavior, that's a good. Are they just really topic. just barely nipping it when you get them, when you do hook one, are they just kind of barely nipping it? Um, or are they getting it all the way back in their throat? Yep. Um, those can all tell you different things. Awesome. So yeah, hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy this week's topics coming up here on The Short Rod Show. Hey Ben, so I've got this buddy that's trying to start a small business, but he's having a real tough time with his digital footprint and just trying to figure all that out. Do you know anybody that could help him out? Well, I think I do. I know uh, a couple cool guys at this company called Evergrow Marketing, and they really specialize in helping landscape and lawn care companies maximize their digital footprint and basically bring customers to them help them get found on the internet. Really? I mean, they'll work with any business. Um, They're really looking to expand. And if you tell them that Ben and Brett sent you from the the Short Rod Show, you can get 10% off your first order. Really cool. If you're interested in the Evergrow Marketing team and what they have to offer, check them out on evergrowmarketing.com and tell them Ben and Brett from the Short Rod Show sent you. You know, Brett, I was poking around on Facebook the other day and I could just not find the Short Rod Show. What's the deal? Oh, you just got to punch us in on Google. What do you mean? We show up on Google already? Oh, yeah. The Evergrow team hooked us up. Holy cow. That's awesome. Yeah. Good deal. I'll try that now. Yeah, right. You just punch in Short Rod Show, and we'll come up on our website, shortrodshow.com. It'll come up on Podbean, Stitcher, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. Awesome. So people can find us all over now. Yeah, all over the internet. That's great. We're also on Instagram, too. I've been trying to keep up with that, posting some cool pictures. When we're out on the ice, you can check us out there, too. Yeah. Sweet updates. Awesome. Check us out, guys. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us through the break. Uh, Like we talked about a little bit earlier, we're going to go over uh, a recent fishing trip that we had up to a small pond up in uh, northern Iowa, uh, about an hour, hour and a half north of of where we're at here in Ankeny. Uh, But yeah, the ice has just not been going our way lately. Nope. Um, A couple little ponds that we had fished early, early on in the year have uh, basically broken up and just started opening up, opened, actually. Opened all the yeah. way up again. 
uh, just some wind and some and some warmer weather. Uh, opened them all up, and then now they're just starting to kind of skim over. I think last night was kind of the the colder night. Yep. Um, to get them to to lock up again, but it's going to be a little while till we're out fishing Ankeny ponds. Yeah, which is unfortunate. Yep. There's some juicy spots, and it's nice just to go after work, but. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, I mean, we even ran into that some, so we're going to talk a little bit about our trip on Sunday. Um, and frankly, I was surprised to see the quality ice that we did see, but we also wasn't surprised that we weren't able to go to spot number one. Um, yeah, that first lake you wanted to go to. Yep, open water, open water, aerator in use. Um, it was a complete. Couldn't hardly get in. <laughs> no, had three out of the or two out of the three entrances were blocked off. Yep. And I mean, that, that makes sense. The DNR doesn't want people running around not knowing what they're getting into. Yeah. Just assuming that the ice is okay, running into lake, yep. into a lake and thinking they got five inches because that's what other area lakes have. And turns out they have zero ice. Turn, didn't work out. You know, skim ice basically. So then we had to backtrack a little bit and hit spot number two, which we found, I would say four inches. Yeah. Four, of four to, decent ice. Yeah. Four, um, four and a half. I mean, there was never a point where I was sketched out about where we were at um yeah the ice but there was, was definitely some variable ice conditions out there yeah and it was on the kind of the downhill slide yep. i guess when yep. we were there because you could tell the ice had been thicker much thicker before yep and it started melt started melting down and i mean it was raining pretty hard when we got there yeah it was raining on us yeah and that makes the ice super slick especially when you forget your cleats at home <laughs> Even, uh yeah i left them in the truck terrible yeah so then ben had to do all the heavy lifting yeah so Ben got to haul the otter around and pull that, which wasn't too bad. Like on the actual wet ice, yeah. it's not bad at all. No. Like and then I did the spudding out, out ahead. Yep. Slip um, and slide. And I'd say maybe we'll start a little bit about the ice conditions we saw. Uh, so on this particular body of water, as you go out, um, there was some cloudy ice. Then you'd hit some real clear ice. And then you'd also see some pressure ridges and you'd see some cracks going mm-hmm. different areas um, where you could definitely tell it. There was something, like the ice was a different color. Um, you could definitely tell something was going on out there. Yep. Um, and those are all clues to kind of keep an eye out. Um, anytime that ice color changes, um, it's best to dig a hole or hit it with a spud bar before you walk on it. Yep. I mean, you were hitting with hitting it with a spud bar hard five or six times. Oh, you wouldn't break and, through. And not touching. Yeah. Not touching it. But so. there was a couple of times we were drilling holes, and you could definitely tell the ice was getting thinner in mm-hmm. some spots. Um, especially in that pressure ridge area. That was a little sketchy. Yep. Um, the ice was always thick enough. I never felt like the ice was thin where I was going to fall through, but it was also, it was definitely different than yeah. other areas of ice. And, and there was that inlet flow coming from, um, some one area of runoff that yep. was going into it where you could definitely tell if you're getting within two, 300 yards of that. It was, it was thinner. Really thin. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's just something to, to keep an eye out, out for when you're out on the ice. Uh, just your spud bar is your best friend. Yep. Absolutely. Um, if if you're going out there, spud it first and have your buddy walk behind that. Yep. So, yep. Stay safe. I know, I mean, how many times, how many stories have there been there, people falling through the ice this past week, two weeks? There's been people falling through the Seems ice. Seems like every other day somebody's falling through the ice. Sections of, of just the geography of the Des Moines metro where yeah. there's no reason at all that people should be on the, any of those. No. By his water. No. And it's really kind of a. Shame, yeah, it's sad crazy. deal, yep. but don't be those guys. No, kind of happens. But uh, so let's get into what we were, we, so we went initially went out there. So this particular body of water has bluegills, known for decent sized bluegills. That's that's kind of mm-hmm. how I discovered it and started fishing it. Known for decent sized bluegills. Also has a few crappies in mm-hmm. it. Uh, low population of perch, and then also bass. Um, I'm sure there's some catfish in there also. They've been but stocking I've never channel seen cats. It. Have they been put the past channel? like six years? I've never seen time. any in there. Yep. I never caught one, never seen one on a camera, never nope. anything. But um, And there's a couple main points of interest on this mm-hmm. body of water where you got uh, one fishing jetty where the, the DNR put out. You got that inlet that we were talking about mm-hmm. where water comes in. Then there's also a brush pile out um, that you can easily identify by all the holes that people had drilled around it. It's but, the community spot. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yep. definitely. And um, so as we were working our way out there, we'd kind of come across a five, six, seven holes, and we'd kind of, well, maybe there's a reason somebody dropped a line here. Yep. So we'd dig a couple of holes, and uh, what we found was you can get a lot of marks on the screen, but they were not biters. Yep. Or they were tiny. 
Yeah, or they were tiny and not biters also. Yep, because there was a ton of, you know, somewhat aggressive, like three to four inch bluegill. Yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe two inch bluegill in there too. <laughs> yeah, there were a couple of real aggressive. But when you did get a bigger one come in there, I mean, they were also, I, I feel like the, the bigger ones were aggressive. Oh, yeah. Yep. But um, kind of what we ran into is they'd come and look at us and then they'd turn off. Like yep. just as quickly as they came in, they'd be gone, which to me is a sure sign that we just didn't have the right bait. And we ended up cycling through a lot. We threw a lot of baits at them. Yep. Yeah. Um, what was interesting was um, kind of our confidence baits kind of produced, but they weren't. Yep. They didn't make us real confident. No. Then that's why you kept running through a lot of them. Um, kind of go a little bit through your mindset when you first drop down and you see a bluegill pull up. Oh, normally it's. Take off. It's game and then on. what are you doing? If I have a noogie on, it's. For sure, they're gonna hit it. You're just gonna bear down on that, well, and they didn't. No, I mean they. I got uh, actually. You spanked me for the first what five fish, probably. Yeah, the wax worms were coming the through. Waxies, and you were using the the cadis, just yeah. a straight lead cadis. Yeah, the reg, the OG cadis number ten. Yep, pink and a wax worm. Yep, and I was I was using the uh, uh, the widow bread. Oh a little yeah, bit. Uh, was using the. I was using a twin ring, Rocky's twin ring. I can't believe you didn't pull any off of that. Oh, man. That's a so sweet lure. Usually that, too. that pulls them in. Fluttering right down. Um, wasn't getting anything there. Um, and I think eventually I was using a polka dot jig, a tungsten dropper. That actually yep. that caught a, a couple. But otherwise, the, the tungsten cadis yep. in yellow, that started really producing, too, after that. Yep. So. Um, well, give us some... Uh, an idea of what really producing meant on this certain. So I trip. caught the biggest fish. Yeah, but really producing meant like you'd see a flurry of like two or three fish we'd yes. catch, and then you'd go forty-five minutes without catching. Another. Yep, yep, absolutely. Yep. That was the hot bite. Yeah, that's I mean you'd have a there. you'd have a window, and you'd have one yep. school come in that was willing to bite, and you they it'd be a flurry until that school left, and then you'd be waiting, for, and then you'd have one or two come in. Mm-hmm. You might have another school come in, and they just were not aggressive. Yep. Yep, and and part of that was you were catching a lot of bluegills, yep. and for some reason they I got two crappies. Yeah, I never even whiffed a crappie. And one of those crappies was the decoy crappie. <laughs> yeah, 100%, that was hilarious. Which was awesome, because I was 100% about it. Yeah, so we went in there, <laughs> uh, we were just wrapping it up eating lunch, and so we go drill a new set of holes out in an area that hadn't been drilled out yet, and... I kind of walk off, and Ben turns around. Oh, got one, got one, got one. I was pulls like, Brett, up. come over here. Check yeah. this out. <laughs> pulls up a crappie, and he's like, get the hut, get the hut. Everybody, come on. We got to get, we're ready to roll, <laughs> drill this whole area out. Did not catch another freaking yep. fish. Just the one crappie. He was a high flyer. He was like, yep. out of 12 feet of water, he was up in like eight feet. He was the typical crappie. Yep. Just came up, smoked my bait, pull him up. He was what, 10, 11 inch? Yeah, he was a nice, it was a nice fish. But. Yeah, nothing crazy, but... Um, good eater size and, and man, it was game on. We were yep. pumped. Yeah. Well, you were pumped. I, pumped. I knew right away it was a decoy crappie because I had already dropped my transducer <laughs> down those holes and seen that there wasn't a lot going on See, down there. And, and I get the decoy crappie thing. I just much rather fish right there in that spot just for whatever. It just makes me feel better. Yeah. Just make sure that. Oh, I you got to probe it. Yeah. I got to exhaust all options. Yeah. You got to try it out and see what's going on out there. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, but yeah, we ended up catching enough for a good little fish fry lunch. Yeah. So we had what? Follow us on six. Instagram. We had a good picture of, uh, four. me doing a little fish frying. Yeah. Yeah. Four fish. Enough for, you know. Yeah. Snack. It's always nice to fry, fry a few fish on the, on the ice anyways. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That was good. Well, so let's get back to the bite a little bit here. We got a little sidetracked. Um, one thing I wanted to touch the whole on. The show is getting sidetracked. Yeah. That's one thing I do. wanted to touch on a little bit, um, was kind of how that bite, how they reacted. Like you said, you threw all those baits at them. You were throwing, I mean, that twin yep. ring's a fairly, I'd call it a fairly aggressive, fairly active bait. Yep. I mean, it's yeah, got it's, a lot of action in the it water. It doesn't have a profile to where if you leave it sitting, yeah. like dead stick style, they're not going to be interested in it because it does not look like any kind of anything. Fish. No. And I mean, with those, so what it is, is it's a spoon with two snap rings and then it goes to a treble hook, right? It's got two two spoons to it. It's got two spoons to it. Yeah, two oh. spoons. Well, either way, it's it. I mean, that treble hook has a lot of swing and yes. a lot of area to yep. swing and have some play to it. Yep, it's um, similar to a dinner bell. So you yeah. have 
you have one main spoon and then you have a smaller spoon next to it. Okay. That can kind of flutter off of it. And kind of and it falls down. Hit each other and yep. ping and off. And then and the trouble underneath. Yeah. But yeah, you need to keep that moving. Yep. And it the the actual fluttering action is where both spoons fling around on the sides and kind of fling down. Yep. But what I thought was interesting and kind of where my mind starts to go is, so you had that very aggressive bait, which was totally unsuccessful. Yep. But on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, a dead stick was also completely unsuccessful. Yeah, tried the jaw jack. Um, yeah, I, well, I had a dead stick too half the day yep. um, with wax worms on it and didn't didn't get a bite, yeah. didn't get nothing. I mean, I would see while we were messing around cooking or doing whatever, you would see fish come in mm-hmm. to my lure that was sitting in the rod holder and they'd swim off. Yep. Um, and on the camera, a couple of those were bass. And normally yeah. a large mouth, geez, that's like candy. Yeah. Well, it's they like it moving. Grab. They don't like just a dead stick. I've never caught a bass on a dead but stick. But like a, my minnow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. On you a minnow, yeah. You would have something like that. Yeah. Well, just that's because you were fishing with those freaking chartreuse. <laughs> the magic minnows. Those things are junk. Not the chartreuse one. I use the me- the medium. Oh, the medium the size medium, shiner? Uh, what's it called? Yeah, emerald shiner. The chemical induced ones yeah, that you find, it, impregnated ones? Freeze some. Yeah. Something like that. I didn't have a lot of faith in those anyways, to be oh, honest. No. It was just something to try out. Yeah. But we didn't also have any false hook sets on that jaw jacker, and it was pretty windy. No. Was well, it was it was set pretty tight. Yeah. I mean, I had to pull on it pretty good to get to break. So I, I need to adjust the angle of the trigger yeah. a little yeah. bit. But. Make it work. Um, getting back to a little bit about that bluegill and different bait styles. So, yeah, we did the dead stick thing, mm-hmm. also unsuccessful. So then that tells me. Well, what's in between that? Then you got Then that tells me mm-hmm. um, they're looking for something a little bit subtle, but also it's a profile deal that we're not hitting right. Yep. Is kind of what that starts to tell me. Is I mean, I had my best luck. I would say on a vertical jig. Yep. Which was, I mean, the Cadis was my best luck, but that's also because it's skewed a little bit because that's my confidence bait, so I'm running that the most anyways. But I mean, I was running horizontal jigs, running spoons. Rattle and flyer, they'd come into it, turn off just as quickly as anything. Yep. Um, so then that starts to tell me that's a profile or color deal. And I don't know that we ever got quite dialed in on what that was. Well, I think that, that water, too, is pretty stained. You yeah. You can tell there's some, some algae and stuff floating in oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to hard to see yeah. through there. So and, and from looking on the camera, it's pretty much a wide open flat all the way through there. I mean, yep. just it's just a bowl. Fish roaming around and that's about it yep but going over on the brush pile there were just small fish i was impressed with that too um i was expecting to see a lot of bigger fish kind of sp- interspersed in there and just kind of yep. floating around but but they were stacked up in there they, they were stacked in, up in it, there in it yep yeah. yeah they wouldn't come out of it they wouldn't come out and you could be a foot on either side of it and not get them yep they weren't even going to look at you yep but um kind of how i don't know that we really figured out either how we sorted out some of the bigger fish we caught. They were just kind of mixed was, in with the smaller ones. They'd come in right with the smaller ones. Yep. Um, and I, they would eat the same bait. I feel like it was mostly first drops, though. Yeah. That I got okay. into a lot of those. Yeah. To where you pick the most aggressive fish, which happened to be the biggest the one. The biggest one's the most aggressive right one. He's going to come take the bait first. Yep. Yep. And then that lends you to moving. Yep. Um, the area that I really wanted to get to was obviously that inlet area. Yep. Um, but... Ice just wasn't safe over there. Um, I think that's probably in the past when I'd fish. That's where I've had my best success. Yep. But yeah, it'd be nice to get up in there. I mean, we we will be able to in a few days, probably. Yeah. Hopefully, the way the weather's going. Yeah, but. nighttime temperatures are all right still. Yep. But. Um. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes you just don't quite figure out the pattern. By the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, we did okay. We had enough to to fry, which is a good day in my book. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we did not have anything down no i mean i'm we're, saying we're confident yeah i'm not saying we didn't have a good day i'm just saying usually what i'm looking for is i figured them out yep. and i would not say that we figured them out nope. that day and then to add even more to that i was out there today yep with my wife for a little uh little getaway and completely opposite pattern the fish were definitely negative they were not they were not as not even neutral yeah, or positive. They were just completely turned off to anything we put down there. Um, my wife actually got one bite, which was like, ooh, awesome, you know? Yeah. But that was one bite over, you know, three, four hours yep. of fishing. Well, you were there in the afternoon. Yep. Um, and the sun was out a little bit. 
Yeah, definitely um, different. The day. conditions were it wasn't raining. Had some I mean, snow it was on top. Decent weather. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's hard to put together a pattern like that. Yep. Um, Especially yeah. when they're negative. I mean, I'd say Sunday when we were out there, they were at a neutral to mm-hmm. negative. Oh, I mean, yeah, some of them were aggressive. Yeah. Where you could you could see them come up right away, but not that great. So. Um, yeah, hopefully that's a few pointers for you guys going out there. Yeah, so when you say that they were negative or neutral, um, how can you kind of tell that on your flasher? So the one fish that I caught today, yeah, spent I spent about two minutes working him. Really? And it was a bluegill. It was about eight inch bluegill on the uh, the widow bread with a a pink noogie. He was right? he was working you that long. Yes, that's surprising. And a ne- a new well not even neutral a negative fish to me would be a fish where you can see the mark come in and he'll just stare at your bait and basically no matter what you do if you're going up or down different actions is not making a change and to the point of where after 30 seconds he swims away a little bit yeah and the trick slowly swims yeah, away slowly like it's he like maybe he wasn't even looking at your bait yep. the whole time yep uh, the trick to that would be to try and get him to come back um, and I kind of believe like fish do not have a very good memory, <laughs> oh, you know, no. they can turn around and you, they swim away for a little bit and then they'll come back and it's kind of like, Oh, it's starting fresh again. Here's yep. a new bait. Yeah. Something else. And is down so there. if you're doing a different action, uh, with your jigging stroke or whatever it is, or whatever bait you have, yep. you can get them to bite again. And that's where yep. it was like a two minute ordeal. Well, that's the it. value of having two completely different style of lures tied up, at least having two. Mm-hmm. Two rods with you, having two of them tied yep. up that way. Yeah, if you do experience that, you can pull that up and drop the next one down real quick before that fish yep. uh, takes off on you. Yep, get them back in. But that was that was a very <clears throat> negative type fish to where uh, nine fish out of ten would get come in, look at your bait, swim away. Yep. And you'd never see them again. Yep. And I just happened to catch that one fish out of ten that I could con into actually biting. Yeah. And that so was, what were that you was doing? Di- were you doing anything different for that one fish than the others, or nope. was it just that one was just a little nope? Bit that one was just dumber than the others, dumber than the rest. <laughs> he hadn't been caught <laughs> ten times. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it had to be because I was doing everything the same. Um, you know, you kind of get into that rhythm of where you have confidence jigging, and yep. you know what's what normally works when the fish are, are turned on. Yep. Um and that was not doing it at all. Hmm. And that that. What what I've learned over the past, I don't know, four or five years of, of doing that, and especially fishing with you, like, we know, we somewhat know what we're doing. We know what catches fish. Sure. So when we try that and we don't catch them, I don't feel so bad now. Yeah, then you kind of scratch your head a little bit. Yep. Go back to the drawing board. there's maybe 10 other people out on this la- on the lake, too, yeah. today. None of them. I didn't see any of them catch fish. Nobody was doing all that great. No one was there for more than a couple hours. Yeah. I mean, everyone just packed up and filtered in and out and left. so you know they're the, seeing the same things that yep. you're seeing so, but see that's the better. to me that's the that's the fun of it is when you don't see anybody else catching them and you keep working mm-hmm. and you figure out how to catch them yep and and today was more like a fun kind of day yeah. so i mean i tried maybe four or five different areas yep. and kind of punched around but i wasn't tournament mode no Swiss cheese well no you had your wife with you you're not gonna do that yeah so and we weren't going to move a bunch. We didn't try a bunch of different baits. I never even tied a different bait on. Oh, yeah. We had a, a tungsten catus um, that she fished a lot. We had the yep. widow bread, and I had the twin ring. Oh, yeah. That was it. So what would you say, um, so as you saw those fish come in on your flasher, um, I guess to me a little bit, and I wonder if you have the same experience, is how fast they come into the flasher is just as important as how fast they go away from the flash. Sure. Um if they come in hot and then they just kind of slowly float away or if they come in hot and take off hot. Um, I guess that kind of tells you a little mm-hmm. bit about their mood a little bit. Yeah, and um, like the on the twin ring today, I was I was not expecting to see anything different when I put that down. But yep. as soon as I fluttered that thing down the hole, there was a fish right there. Came right on. In, stared at it, and then pff, took off. Disappeared. So that was the aggressive fish. He wanted something. Yes. But it was not... He wanted the profile of that twin ring. He saw the flash yep. as it was coming down the hole, came in to investigate, yep. but it wasn't what he wanted. Yeah, and a little plug for uh, for the twin ring, too. If you guys don't know what we're talking about, I don't even know if you We've can never find mentioned it. it on this podcast you can yet. find it online, but it's, it's literally a guy named Rocky 
Rocky's Jigs yeah. in Waterloo, Iowa, that makes the twin ring. Yeah. So uh, check them out at uh, Hank's Bait Shop in yeah. Waterloo. They sell them. Um, I think he sells them direct too. They're not no very expensive. No, but I mean it's 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 a really cool uh, cool design. It's that's... definitely something that fish haven't seen before. Yep. I mean it's yep. something that I guarantee you that the guy next to you is not fishing with. And uh, Dan Johnston and at the uh, Hanks, uh, shoot, what's it called? Seminar, the yeah. ice fishing seminar that, that I went to. Um, that's his confidence bait. This that's his rattling ring. flyer, and that's yeah. his, yep. That's, that's his legit. Genius. So so he runs that constantly, and he went to a, uh, put on a seminar out in Indiana, and those guys out there had never heard of any such thing and freaking bought out the twin rings <laughs> that's funny and just soak that area and rocky stuff yeah just it, which is funny because it's it is a really regional thing too you think oh, yeah. about like schoolie poles yep that's pretty regional like yep. if you're not from not the ever... midwest a lot of people haven't heard of those no. or fish with them so um yeah rocky's twin ring yeah and they come different sizes colors everything but so far we haven't had a whole lot of great so far not them. yet i don't think we've really gotten into but we like haven't gotten crappie, into crappie no. water we haven't been by any means. really fishing hard crappies yet anyway but yep yep um what else did i want to mention on the on the flasher stuff yeah that, that fish behavior like today was totally different than the fish behavior that we saw yeah so elaborate a little Sunday. bit on that because it sounds real similar like it was real tough but maybe you didn't even get them on the flasher well n- yeah so we had number one less traffic on the flasher today like in, okay. in general, not nearly as many marks. Yeah. If I, you know, out of, tw- if we drilled 20 holes last yeah. week, we maybe saw fish in what, 10 of them? If not more. A, a flash or two of. Or know, they'd come in them. when you drop down. Yep. Yep. Um, I'm, I maybe saw a fish on one hole. Oh, really? So yep. they weren't nearly as active. Yep. And that's the one that I fished and that's the one that I caught one bluegill on. And then occasionally another fish would come in be real negative and yep. f- gone uh yeah you're definitely i mean i gr- understand the circumstances that you're in but if it was just you and i we would have swiss cheese that place oh yeah we would have found them for yeah. sure i don't know if we would have got them to bite a lot better i don't know we could try some other baits i mean i've had it too where you just move to a different spot move to a different mm-hmm. depth move to an area where they're feeding yep. and then all of a sudden it's a night and day difference well, I think that community hole is pretty much overfished anyway. Yeah, they're not feeding in that hole. So let's touch on that yeah. community hole a little bit of what we saw on Sunday. Yeah. Um, I mean, you drop the camera down. It looked like there's a couple of Christmas trees down there. Well, your dead, your dead giveaway when you're on your flasher is you see way more marks than you normally do. And you're like, holy and crap, they're not moving. there's a huge school of fish. But they're not moving. And they're not moving. Yeah, that's so brush. That'd be a brush pile. Yeah. And those fish did not want anything to do with anything in that yep. brush pile. They're you can drop confident. in the, i mean i dropped my lure down and you could see it on the camera right in their face and there was like nothing was even there yep so yeah i don't imagine those fellas fishing that brush pile were doing all that great no they were not catching anything yeah at all and they were diehards too there was it was maybe three guys with literally a flasher and a bucket oh yeah sitting on the bucket looking at the flasher came to hit it and get out of there Yep. Huh. So, which is funny because then uh, <laughs> I climbed out of the shelter to go hunt around a little bit. I just had my sweatshirt on and there's freaking heat waves blown out as I opened the door. I mean, it's like 90 <laughs> degrees inside the shelter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it was funny. And those poor guys are just over there freezing their butts off. Well, you got to keep it comfortable in there for the yeah. doggy and the wife. Well, even on low, it was way too hot. Yeah. It's like, I do not run it this hot normally. Yeah. Like, well, it wasn't even all that cold. We wouldn't even have been today. with heat. We wouldn't even have the, the heat on. <laughs> no. But that's all right. We had a we had a good time. So yeah. Hopefully we'll be able to I'm do pretty, it I'm pretty, I'm, well, talk a little bit about the snow you saw on there today too that you'd mentioned before. Oh we, yeah, that's right. Before so, we fired up the recorder. So the, uh, there was maybe half an inch of snow total anywhere around on that lake. Um, but of course it drifts when it, when it blows around and on the drifted spots, there's maybe two inches, you know, deep. Um, when I punched a hole in those spots, it was maybe three, three and a half inches of ice versus five and a half. Yeah. Everywhere else. So the snow was definitely the snow delaying was that, that growth. Yep. So that's something to, to keep in mind if you're, if you're running through yep. punching holes anywhere where there's some snow covering some of that, insulating the ice. Be it careful. Makes a difference. But on, I have had it where 
if you if you're in that drift situation like that, mm-hmm. sometimes the, the predator fish like to stack up underneath those drifts. Yeah, and that's in the what shade. I, was, I was hoping for is getting a little bit of shade, yep. something different, just yep. you know, something that's not yep. the norm um, to try and or turn just the like light those pressure it. ridges that mm-hmm. you see on the ice. They're a little dangerous. Um, you got to butt them out and be careful, but. A lot of times fish will stack up on those pressure ridges also. Yep. Um, and I, yeah, I guess the only thing I can come up with is it's the shade. Um, yep. You got the bait fish or something. Maybe they're trying to hide up underneath the, some of the pressure ridge areas. But, um, yeah, those predators are just looking yeah. for some darkness to hide in. Yep. Yep. Um, yeah, otherwise the the rest of the ice was pretty good. It's just, it's amazing to me how the day we were out there, it was raining like crazy. Yep. Oh, ice, yeah, it was the middle of a storm. You know, there's puddles everywhere, and then it got colder as the day went on. Ice dried up. Dried up and froze even more solid. Yep. And the ice got better as the day went on. Oh, yeah. So it's kind of the opposite of of how it normally goes. Yep. 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 Well, you got anything else you want to touch on uh, from our trip on Sunday? Yeah. Wanted, well, um, (laughs) something else that we uh, encountered going up and going back was... Driving in the short rod show truck. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just having people, we had, I don't know, four or five guys. Yeah. Like, either thumbs up or waving at us. Yeah, they are like, passing us. Just like, yes, this is awesome. Yeah. You guys are great. I don't know if there are listeners. If you were listeners, <laughs> chime in. If you are if you see us, let us know. Shoot us a picture. I was hoping one of them would be, like, getting a, getting a picture of us going down the road. Yeah. You know, like, their passengers taking a picture of us <laughs> getting out there. That was funny. I didn't, it didn't even occur to me that somebody would wave at us until it happened on our way Yeah, out. and that and guy like, was like... I, well, at first I was like, what the hell is that guy doing? And then I was like, oh, yeah, he's waving. waving up on us. He's waving at us. And then all us. of a sudden gets up next to us and was like, yeah, <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> that was great. Uh, but, yeah, we're working on um, some decals that we're we're trying to gauge some interest on too. Yep. And see if you guys would be uh interested in in purchasing those from us supporting uh the Short Rod show of course. Uh we don't have a lot of costs in the podcast, but no. there's there's still costs that we have. Yeah. Um Brett and I are just paying out of pocket yep. having a good time yep. doing this hosting for websites. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That sort of stuff. Um so yeah, maybe we'll we'll post some more pictures of what they look like up, up on our website and you guys can get yeah. some feedback on uh, on what you think about. Keep Ben busy at his kitchen table. Yep, picking decals, a little manufacturing picking the operation. Center of the O's out of decals. Oh man, there's, <laughs> that's a problem with an ice fishing podcast. That's so many different. There's a lot spots of spots you got to pull out. Yeah, there's a lot of dang inside decals. turns. <laughs> but I actually made a, a four foot long one that's in the back of the pickup. That's legit. Which is just hilarious. Yeah. Um, it gets covered up a little bit by the four wheeler. That's gonna be our best marketing but, thing. I oh yeah, overall. So all my neighbors are listening in. Well, thanks, obviously thanks now they that. see the yep. big freaking trucks. So in the driveway. shout out to the neighborhood in Ankeny. Thanks for listening in. Shout out to the hood. <laughs> Getting all of our uh, all of our downloads in for this week. But yep. uh, oh yeah. man, dude, last few days downloads ripping. were freaking nuts. Yeah, that one day we had three hundred going like crazy. Whew. Um. So yeah, it's definitely uh, been getting better and better, and um, we actually were trending a little bit on uh on apple yeah what was that that email it said we're the number 70 the 76th yeah rank the 76th pod uh hobby podcast yeah and what's funny was our peak which we were not even paying attention and totally missed yeah. but on the canadian apple podcast oh, yeah. in the hobbies category we were number three at our peak <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to everyone in canada listening in. yeah we That's appreciate awesome. the tune-ins guys <laughs> Never would have guessed. That's, That's hilarious. Crazy. Yep, pretty cool stuff. So, um, but yeah, keep listening in. We got some more good stuff. Uh, do some more interviews. Yeah, we're working too. on some juicy interviews for some guys. Uh, we'll keep that a secret for now. And yeah, just waiting basically for the first of the year to come around and uh, the holidays to slow down. Yep. People get back into business mode and yep. fishing mode. It'll be nice to get back into a regular yep. routine again I'm ready here for soon. It. Definitely. So keep listening in every week. Uh, we try and release episodes every Sunday at 8.30. Yep. Seems to be a good time. People can uh, can catch up throughout the week then or on the weekend when it first comes out. Yep. I know that's pretty cool to see it pop up on your phone right away on Sunday morning. So if you're just hanging out, tune in to The Short Rod Show. <laughs>